last class we have seen that the rax theorem and some more results continuation of that corollary 4.4 let g be a simple graph with gamma greater than or equal to 3 if c of g is complete then g is hamiltonian last class we have seen g is hamiltonian implies c of g is hamiltonian if c of g is complete we know that every complete graph is hamiltonian that is every complete graph is hamiltonian outer cycle of every complete graph contains all the vertices of g therefore every complete graph is hamiltonian every complete graph is hamiltonian if g is c of g is complete then c of g is hamiltonian so c of g is hamiltonian implies g is hamiltonian next we are going to see the theorem savatar's theorem that is theorem 4.5 let g be a simple graph with the degree sequence d1 d2 d gamma where d1 less than or equal to d2 less than or equal to d3 less than or equal to d gamma and gamma greater than or equal to 3 suppose that there is no value of m suppose that there is no value of m less than or equal to gamma by 2 for which dm less than or equal to m and d gamma minus m less than gamma minus m then g is hamiltonian proof of the theorem is given by contradiction let g satisfy the hypothesis of the theorem that is hypothesis of the theorem means let g be a simple graph with the degree sequence suppose there is no value of m less than gamma by 2 for which dm less than or equal to m and d gamma minus m less than or equal to gamma minus m then only g is hamiltonian that is we have to prove g is hamiltonian we have to prove g is hamiltonian it is enough to prove that c of g is complete if we prove c of g is complete then c of g complete implies c of g is hamiltonian c of g is hamiltonian implies g is hamiltonian Therefore, it is enough to prove that C of G is complete. The proof is given by the contradiction. Suppose C of G is not complete. C of G is not complete implies at least one pair of non-adjacent vertices existing in C of G. Let D dash of V denote the degree of the vertex V in C of G. That is D of V denote the degree of the vertex in G and D dash of V denote the degree of the vertex B in C of G. So C of G is not complete. Therefore, at least one pair of non-adjacent vertices exist. Now, now let us take U and V B any two non-adjacent vertices in C of G such that D of U less than D dash D dash of U less than or equal to D dash of V and the degrees of D dash of U plus D dash of V is as well as possible. Let d dash of v, d dash of u equal to m. Then d dash of u plus d dash of v less than gamma. d dash of d dash of u equal to m. Here u and v are any to non-adjacent vertices in C of G. That is in C of G, that is closer of G, we cannot join u and v only if d dash of u plus d dash of v less than gamma. From this d dash of v less than gamma minus d dash of u that is d dash of v less than gamma minus m. Now consider this sets s equal to v a belongs to v minus v. v a is non-adjacent with v that is the vertices which are non-adjacent with v are all in s. The vertices which are non-adjacent with u are all in t. Yes the set of all vertices v a in V minus V, V A is adjacent with V in C of G. That is the first, we have to find the number of vertices in S. The set of all vertices, that is total number of vertices in C of G is nothing but the total number of vertices in G, that is gamma. Gamma minus that is V minus V. The vertex set will be in S. V is not in S. Therefore, minus 1. Minus V A is non adjacent with V A is non adjacent with V. That is the vertices which are non adjacent with V are all in S. So, vertices with the adjacent with V. We subtract the vertices 
adjacent with V be subtracted from the set S. That is gamma minus 1 minus T dash of V. Similarly, in T, that is gamma minus the vertices which are not adjacent with the U means D dash of U. So, modulus of S minus D dash of V and gamma minus 1 minus D dash of U. Also, we know the know that d dash of u equal to m and d dash of v is less than gamma minus m. Therefore, mod s equal to gamma minus 1 minus instead of d of v, instead of d of v, we put gamma minus 1, then gamma minus 1. That is gamma minus 1 minus gamma plus m equal to gamma cancel that is m plus m minus 1. That is mod s greater than m minus 1 implies mod s greater than or equal to m. Therefore, the number of vertices, the number of vertices in s, the number of vertices in s is at least m. Similarly, the number of vertices in t, that is gamma minus 1 minus d dash of u, m. Therefore, this is greater than gamma minus m. Therefore, number of vertices in S is at least m. And therefore, number of vertices T is at least gamma minus m. That is, number of vertices in S is gamma minus 1 minus V dash of V. That implies that is the modulus of S is greater than m minus 1. Therefore, modulus of S greater than or equal to m. Therefore, the number of vertices in S is at least m. Then, Modulus of T is gamma minus 1. Instead of D dash of U, put M. That is gamma minus 1 minus M, which is greater than gamma minus M. Therefore, the number of vertices in T is at least gamma minus M. By choice of U and V, each vertex in S has a degree at most D dash of V. Since D dash of U plus D dash of U is as large as possible, therefore, any vertex adjacent with the uh, non-adjacent with B has degree at most D days of M. And each vertex in T, days, T, T union U has a degree at most D days of V. Since D days of U plus D days of V is, we, we have chosen U and V such that D days of U plus D days of V is as large as possible. That is any vertex adjacent with the non-adjacent with the U has a degree at most D days of V. That, that is each vertex in S has a degree at most that is we set D dash of U equal to M therefore at most M. And each vertex in T union U has a degree which is less than gamma minus M. That is D dash of it, it has a degree at most D dash of V. D dash of V is less than gamma minus D dash of V is less than gamma minus M. Therefore, each vertex in T union U has a degree less than gamma minus M. Therefore, C of G has, we already see, we already see, the, we have already seen a number of vertices in S is at least M and a number of vertices in T is less than gamma minus M minus 1. Therefore, C of G has at least M vertices of degree at most M. And C of G has at least gamma minus m vertices of degree less than gamma minus m. Because g is a spanning subgraph of g, therefore m, any result which is true in g is also true in c of g. That is a degree of by our hypothesis dm is less than or equal to n and d gamma minus m is less than or equal to gamma minus m. That is dm less than or equal to m and d gamma minus m is less than gamma minus m. We got dm less than or equal to m and d gamma minus m less than gamma minus m which is a contradiction. Since there is no value of m less than gamma by 2 dm less than or equal to n and d gamma minus m less than or equal to gamma minus m. But we have the number m which is less than gamma by 2 that is d dash of u less than or equal to d dash of v implies that is d dash of u m d dash of v gamma minus m that is 2m less than gamma 
that is m less than gamma by 2. So, m exists like this less than gamma by 2 and also we have dm less than or equal to n and d gamma minus m less than gamma minus m which is a contradiction. Therefore, C of G is complete. The, the C of G complete implies C of G is Ham Hamiltonian since any complete graph is a Hamiltonian graph. Therefore, C of G is a Hamiltonian graph. G is C of N is a closer of G is Hamiltonian implies G is Hamiltonian. Therefore, G is a Hamiltonian graph.